Yo, 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 what's up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. It's always the hostess with your mostest, PKR, Pastor Keenan Riley, back with another episode of People Suck, Love Them Anyways. And guess what? Guess who got their voice back? Guess who? Guess what? <laughs> Stella got her groove back, Stella baby. Got her groove Stella back, got baby. her groove back, and he is ready to just shout you down for the next 37 minutes, man, and see, see what happens, I guess. But, uh, Man, I tell you what, I think you said it one time. It's like whenever you get sick, uh, it makes you so thankful for right. when you are not sick. Uh, and I tell you what, man, like I am so thankful to have my voice back. So thankful to uh, uh, not be like, uh, I, I really right. felt like Robert uh, Robert Kennedy, you Robert know? Kennedy. Uh, yeah, RFK. That's who I really felt oh, like, man. Nobody getting that reference. Oh, uh, I think <laughs> right, probably not. But uh, to, sounds to, more like uh, that that smoker chick, you know? Oh, uh, yeah, from, yeah. Uh, from those commercials. Now I yeah, can't uh, even start today. yeah, yeah. Probably that's what I felt like, anyways, <laughs> man. And uh, then it would turn a really high pitched right there at the end, and then fade out on me. All but right. praise God, man, got my voice back for sure. So. As always, you done heard uh, negativity, Nick, uh, over here beside him. Yeah, negativity, Nick, uh, or negativity, Nick, uh, right over here beside him. So I'm um, joined by him, man. And again, thank you so much to each and every person out there um, that hits that download button, that listens to us, that shares the gospel, that tells a friend, uh, you know, all of that good stuff, man. We've added another country uh, since we've been here last, I feel like. And that country is Egypt, Egypt man. <laughs> Yes, the Egyptians. Uh, We have spent so much time talking about coming out of bondage from Egypt that now we're hoping to get our podcast in Egypt, Egypt. right? Yes, absolutely. Full circle moment. Yeah, so uh, thankful, man, for the downloads in Egypt as well. And I'll tell you what, man. You know, growing up, I never thought we'd have the opportunity. I didn't know you growing up, but I never thought that, that there would be an opportunity to talk to somebody in Egypt about Jesus. Right. Pretty crazy. It is, it. man. It's it's amazing to see. Uh, it's amazing to see how God can work on such a a worldly level. And I don't mean like worldly, like you know the world mm-hmm. things. But I'm just saying, like our outreach is so much bigger than what you can ever dream, think, or imagine. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely. I mean, not, not to say that a lot of people are being limiting, uh, but you know, it just the, the us doing this takes away that limiting factor. You know, I mean, and again. You know, right now where you aren't reaching, you know, 100,000 people in Egypt, but, you know, like that one person in Egypt is still crazy because, I mean, what other, you know, it's kind of like what other church in the area is reaching somebody in Egypt? Yeah. What other church in the area has a podcast that's listened to, you know, every week in India? Right. Uh, you know, like it, it, so it's, it's pretty crazy to think about. Um, it really is. And, you know, we get we get so caught up in the wanting it to be so many people. But, um, you know, again, we, we've talked many times before about, you know, the power of that one person. Yeah. Um, which is, is pretty cool. Pretty yeah. Crazy. Uh, also, I want to give a shout out uh, to my to a guy that would do this, man. Uh, we're always on TikTok, floating around. Nick's got a TikTok. I got one, um, you know, and and we just try to uh, we try to. I think Nick takes it more of in the comedy level uh, of trying to reach people for Jesus. I take it more in the uh, Carthiest level. Uh, hey, there you go. I know, Carthiest. man. I wanted to throw that word out yeah, there. Flashback. Uh, yeah, Throwback. but I uh, had a guy named Kelly, man, reach out to me, and uh, he started a podcast uh, not too long ago. And, uh, you know, so I thought he might give him a shout out, man. And, and his, his podcast is called Glorified uh, Podcast. So uh, just started it, just fresh. We conversed a little bit about it, man. And, And, uh, you know, it's amazing. Again, this is another avenue where somebody has listened and kind of got inspired to do their own thing, man. Um, And so I just wanted to read this message. Uh, I said, well, I started your podcast from the beginning today and the first two episodes spot on for me. Thank you again. And, uh, you know, so shout out, man, to him. Uh, If you get an opportunity, uh, reach on over to uh, Glorify Podcast, man. Check it out. See what's going on and uh, give a give a support, man. Just like you're out there doing for us. We appreciate it so much. Um, but yeah, man, this is, it's just amazing day after day, moment after moment to see how you're touching lives and and, and you won't see it every day. You won't see it every moment. Uh, but I tell you when those messages do come or when those, when those inspirations do come, man, it makes it worth it. That's the big thing for me. It makes it worth it, uh, to see, you know, that the gospel's being spread, that people's hearts and lives are being changed. And maybe just because we took a chance, now somebody else is taking a chance. That's pretty cool to me, man. Yeah, that's the point and purpose, I think. Uh, you know, I'd, I'd love to see more. And we talk about this time and time again. You know, like the downloads are great. You know, they're awesome. They're wonderful. The reviews matter a lot. Uh, yeah. We don't. We haven't talked about that in a long time. Right. But, you know, just getting on Spotify, getting on Apple uh, Podcasts, giving us a review on there, going to our YouTube page, liking the videos, sharing the videos that we've been putting out. 
uh, to the to the listener, I guess to the viewers yeah. uh, out there. Th those things help a lot. They, you know, I, I, as I'm, I'm in marketing, I'll put it that way. I, if I can get through that stutter shit I just had, huh. uh, I'm in marketing, so you know, I tell people he's not the voice of marketing. Yeah, I, I am actually. But, <laughs> oh, well, yeah, but but, uh, uh, but basically, you know, uh, what I tell my um, like the new people that come on, you know, like uh, new hires, things like that, I tell them that you guys are my mini marketers. Uh, yeah. which means that you guys have an audience that I may not have been able to reach yet. Um, you have people that need to hear about Jesus uh, that I haven't been able to reach yet, that we haven't been able to reach yet. Right. Uh, so, you know, you guys have a, a duty and responsibility, I would say, to, to spread the gospel in that yeah. way. Um, you know, not just to share this, you know, the podcast video or the podcast itself, but to share, you know, the church's videos, you know, the Sunday sermons, Wednesday sermons, all that kind of stuff. Right. Um, you know, you may think it's silly, but, you know, how, how much easier is it to hit that share button than it is to go door to door and say, hey, have you right. ever heard about Jesus or can I tell you about Fruition Church? Yeah, well, the cool part to me is, is that, you know, uh, you take your big time uh, celebrity pastors and please do not throw vegetables or rocks or anything else vegetables. at me. Uh, yeah, uh, at this point, uh, you know, regardless of how you feel about them and, and things like that. What I'm, I guess the, the point what I'm wanting to make is, is that before Mike Todd or before T.D. Uh, T. D. Jakes, before Joel Osteen, before Stephen Furtick, uh, before uh, Judah Smith, uh, before all of these people, Rich Wilkerson Jr., I'm still coming out, uh, before all of these people, Kenneth Copeland, shout out. Uh, no, uh, that's a whole other level of celebrity right yeah, there. Right. Anyways. Uh, Don't before, you say I did. I know, right? Yeah. Uh, before uh, all of those people have become – I guess, in the public eye so much, you know, it took people literally liking and sharing mm -hmm. and contributing to that, you know, uh, to where they are today in, in this moment in time. And I mean, honestly, we're not, you know, we're not celebrity status. We may never be celebrity status. Don't care nothing about being celebrity status. But I think what better way, man, to help two people tell more people about Jesus mm -hmm. than by just literally hitting a like and a share button. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, or comment, hitting a download or a comment or yeah. something like that. That's the cool thing to me, man. Um, we see it all the time with small businesses. You know, we talk about like support your small businesses, support this and support this. And it's like, well, support your local church, you know, support your local pastors, support your local ministries and outreaches. And, you know, make sure people are knowing, man, because this is vital uh, to this is vital to the kingdom of God. And if we reach one person, which, again, it looks like we have, we're reaching mm -hmm. multitudes of people now. You know, if we can reach these people and get them to start a podcast, get them to write a book, get them to give their heart to Jesus, get them to tell somebody else, then you know what? You have had some help. You've had you've had a hand in that somewhere to help get the word out and to tell more people about Jesus. Yeah, exactly. And it's something very simple, something very small that, you know, the viewers or listeners uh, can do to kind of help us out. But, you know, helping us out helps other people out, or at least that's the goal. Um, you know, and that's what we all as Christians should be doing, yeah. you know, and I know there may be people listening to this that aren't Christians, but regardless, um, you know, the, if, if you learned or gained something, you know, there's a reason you're listening to this. If you liked True. it, loved it, hated it, whatever, yeah. you know, share, even if you hated it, shared it, you know, that, <laughs> you know, bad don't press you is listen good to press, these people. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> don't you listen to this. Right, any press, I guess. But, um, but yeah, it is something I think that's, it's, it's useful. It's helpful. Um, you know, leaving us those reviews, sharing the stuff. Um, all that kind of stuff is very helpful. And emailing us too. I mean, you can email us uh, fruitionchurchky at gmail dot com. Mm -hmm. um, emailing us, you know, because that that's what I was trying to get at. Really, was the fact that you know we have listeners in India, listeners in Egypt, listeners in Russia, listeners in all over the place. I mean, yeah. it, and you know, I would love, you know, I would assume. I don't know how this works over there, but I would assume you you speak and understand English <laughs> to to be able to listen to this. We hope. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe it's we might be inspiring people right? to learn English. Hey, you never know. You never know, uh, man. Speaking of which, Babbel.com. No, yeah. no, no, like, We're changing wanna, yeah, the world. Uh, no. That's amazing. All uh, right. But, yeah, I think it would be great, you know, to, uh, we, to hear from you all, you know, to, to send us emails, messages on Facebook, uh, comment on the videos, comment, you know, something along those lines. Um, you know, tell us exactly where you're listening from, you know, why you're listening, what you're getting out of it. Um, those kinds of things would be amazing. Um, you know, like I said, I know a lot of other podcasts are doing it, you know, as, as Keenan just did. If you, if you leave a review, if you send us a message, comment it on Facebook, whatever it is, you know, we'll, you know, shout you out of here on the, yeah, on the podcast. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and, you know, your name will be heard by, you know, tens of people <laughs> in different countries. But, uh, you know, just, yeah. but again, I think it's great. It's a great opportunity, though. Uh, and we're, we're very thankful, I think, just to just to be able to reach people, you know, that we'll never even meet, uh, yeah. you know, pending some miracle by God right. yeah. or some rich dude in Egypt listening. And he's like, hey, come on over. I'm always looking yeah, for that absolutely. private jet to land somewhere <laughs> over here and say, hey, I'm looking for yeah. Keenan and Nick. Yeah, you Keenan know. and Nick. We're going, um, we're going to Egypt. Yep. And if, it, if they get to me first, I'm just putting the door up and going, man. Uh, yeah. I'll let you know how it was. So. Yeah. 
but nonetheless, again, so thank you so much to everybody. This this truly does mean a lot to us. Uh, we do take time out of our schedule every Sunday now just to come in here, sit down, tape this, and and hopefully something is said and done, as we always say at the end of every podcast, that will help change a heart and life. Help maybe get some people in the right direction. Help maybe give some people some more spiritual food for the week. And uh, so that's what we do this for. And uh, so we're thankful that people are being blessed by it and people are reaching out, man. And um, So let's let's get into what we talked about today. First off, man, I'm tired. I, I know you're tired, too. Um, every month, uh, our church does a group hike uh, together. And uh, today, man, we took on uh, some elevation. Uh, not the church. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. We took out some elevation, man. Uh, what, what was it you said? About 900 feet is where we yeah, maxed about, out at? About 877 feet in elevation, I think, is the highest uh, that my Apple Watch recorded. Yeah, so, uh, so uh, that's pretty insane, man. Uh, but uh, I'm so proud, man, of the church folk who get together and do this uh, every month. And they're working on themselves spiritually, physically, emotionally, mentally. Uh, we've, got, we've got some people uh, that, that are hiking with us now, that are going with us now, that literally have let their bodies get the best of them up until this point. And they're like, you know what? I'm going, I'm doing it. I'm being a part of this man. And, and that's a blessing. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a blessing. And, and I want people to understand too, that ministry is so much more than Sundays for an hour and a half. It's so much more than Wednesdays for an hour. You know, ministry is, is bonding together. It's praying together. It's loving each other. It's getting out in the wilderness like what we're doing now every month. And just, man, just the conversations that we're having. You know, we're walking and we're hiking. And, and still, whenever we're not dying of breath and trying to trying to lug kids up uh, up the side of mountains and everything else, like we're having conversations with each other. We're growing together. We're learning each other. We're, we're growing deeper with each other. And, and we're really facilitating these relationships that the Bible often talks about. Uh, that you see over in like the book of Acts when the church was first started and things like that. And yeah, so don't, don't get scared about a group of church people meeting in the woods. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, yeah, don't, yeah. Don't get scared away by that because there are good ways to do it. <laughs> I would say only if we met at night, that's yeah, whenever yeah. I would get, if a church group is meeting at night in the woods and you don't know nothing about it, may want to stay left or right of that. Uh-huh. You know, I uh, definitely don't want to show up. Uh, Shout but, out to uh, all the, uh, the churches who do camps. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. They're like, yeah, our percentage went down this yeah, year uh, yeah, by yeah. 42%. Uh, people suck love them anyway. Yeah, <laughs> right. Absolutely. But uh, yeah, man, I'm just, you know, I'm just so thankful for that. And I'm thankful for, for again, ministries that are starting to evolve. I think that's a huge deal. So, you know, if you're listening and, and you're in, involved in church or you're involved with a church that maybe you know, might not be doing much right now. You know, you may just want to kind of bring it to the forefront and say, hey, like, what if we got some stuff going on outside of the walls, man? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I mean, you might have, you know, you might have a little bit turnout every once in a while, but it's something to build on. It's something not to get discouraged at, but to build on and build on and build on. And, man, I tell you, I I, I feel like our our stuff this year so far has been a success. Yeah, I mean, we've seen, I mean, just like you were saying kind of uh, earlier after church, you know, we've seen a lot of newer people kind of flooding them flooding in quite a bit lately yeah. um, and that's been awesome um it's been difficult for me to try and remember names but i can't uh, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, i can't i'm, I'm so trying to get bad better at it yeah i'm trying to get better at it but yeah it's it's awesome uh to, to see that um as you said you know the church services on sunday uh, the viewership of that has grown quite a bit it has um you know we we've seen you know, pe- you know again we're still reaching more and more countries uh you know with the podcast Mm-hmm. Uh, I think we we're in 40 countries now. I think when we added Egypt, that hit us at 40, which is, you know, more than we're at states right now in America. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, that's awesome. You know, just seeing that growth, um, you know, and not, there's, you know, a lot of other things, you know, in, that are working. And I, I do believe that we're going to see more growth. I mean, it's only March, um, you know, yeah. as we're recording this right now. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, it's only March and, um, you know, there's only, only up to go from here. Hopefully. Oh, <laughs> only up to go from here. Yeah, man. And I mean, that's just us keep, you know, you have to be consistent. You have to keep building. You have to keep moving. You have to keep growing. You just have to keep sowing that seed, uh, you know, and keep going, keep on going from there. Um, you know, what we talked about today in service was was something where we talked about the suffering saint. And uh, I think it flows right in with what we're talking about, because uh, uh, as I said today, I, I feel like that we've let the world kind of corrupt us as to far as as, as to what blessing or, or being blessed looks like. Mm-hmm. And, and we say, you know, we're blessed if we, oh man, I, you know, we, we got a new car, we got a new job, we got a new house, we got a new spouse, we got a new mouse and a louse. And no, <laughs> we got, I mean, you know, uh, we got, so 
So like we, we, we feel like we're blessed if we have something to show for it, you know. And and if we go back and read, it was First Peter 4 where we came from today. Uh, but if you go back and read that scripture, Peter is writing and saying, hey, look, you're going to be persecuted against. Um, people are going to hate you. Um, if you're struggling, if you're in the middle of something and you feel like that the whole world is falling down around you, then guess what? You're blessed. And mm -hmm. so it's like, wait a minute, hold up. You're mm -hmm. telling me that I'm suffering, but yet I'm blessed. And for us, like, I feel like as churches, we talk about this a lot. We, we, and I said this today, we've taught the church how to shout, but we've not talked to, talked to the church about any substance whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And so for, for the church, it's like, if something feels good, we shout. If something sounds good, we shout. If something looks good, we shout. But what do we do if we're in the valley? What do we do if we're in the darkness? What do we do if we're fighting a battle? What do we do? We don't shout then most of the time. We don't even show up to church most of the time when that happens. You know, we get so mm -hmm. defeated by situations that we don't shout. We just don't show up. And or if we show up physically, we definitely don't show up spiritually. Um, and and so we talked a lot today about how blessings uh, are not necessarily something that is going to be great, mm -hmm. um, something that is going to be fantastic, but instead. You know, we got to learn to fix our focus uh, on if we're in the middle of a situation, not what's happening around us, but how God is working in us, protecting us and moving us mm -hmm. through. Yeah, and, I, and that's, that's something that you were kind of talking about in the in the message today was the idea of, you know, like, and it's something that I've worked on a lot, um, you know, as, as last year was ending, uh, going into this year, I was being more thankful for all that God's done. One of my favorite songs right now is called Counting My Blessings. I can never remember the guy's name, <laughs> but it's like Stephen something. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, he talks about, you know, how I, I could count all day long, all month long, all year long, forever, and I'll never be able to count how many times God has blessed me. Yeah. Um, you know, and that song just really hits hard. You know, again, it's kind of the, the season of life I'm in right now. Um, as you know, you know, there's been a lot of uh, waiting uh, for things to happen that I want to happen, whether it's, you know, a house or, you know, things with jobs, whatever yeah. it may be. You know, there's a lot of things where I've waited a lot longer than I thought I would, um, you know, and things may not look exactly the way I want them to or may not be happening exactly when I want them to. Um, but, you know, just trying to remind myself, um, you know, every day that I still have things to be thankful for. Um, you know, I started a gratitude journal every single day. I try to remember, set an alarm on my phone to type five things that I'm grateful for. Sometimes, you know, it's, it's harder to find things than other days. But I still try to find some, you know, the five some things <laughs> to to be thankful for each day. Did you ever yeah. list me on there? Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes. 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 Uh, uh, but yeah, it's it's just it's it's nice to sit back and to think, you know, even when things aren't going your way, you still have so much to be thankful for. Yeah, that's that's the big deal right there, man. Is to be thankful for something. And you know, we gave some instances from the Bible, and uh, we'll, we'll talk about a few of them. Uh, but one of the first instances that came to my mind that I, that I referenced in uh, the sermon today was King David and how David was selected and anointed to be the next king of Israel, but it did not happen that day. Like, he didn't step into the position that day. And so, you know, him being anointed and him seeing the promise come forward, yeah, shout me down moment, hallelujah, raise your hands, clap, clap, whatever. Um, but here's the deal. There was a guy in charge. There was already a king of Israel, and his name was Saul. And Saul was not going to give up that position too easy. And Saul spent the better half of, of the rest of that book, man, of chasing David all around the countryside trying to kill him uh, because he was jealous and he was tore up and he, he you know, he just, he was so just, focused on on David stealing you know the throne from him that he was just tore up about this and here's the deal we we get to a moment in time where David has the opportunity uh more than once but one one time I'm going to talk about is David had the opportunity to kill Saul in a cave and he literally snuck up behind him he had the numbers in his favor he snuck up behind him and he could have took him out at that moment in time and what did David do David cut a corner of Saul's robe off Literally cut a corner off and let Saul go. It's got to be hard with a sword. Yeah, I mean, absolutely, man. I mean, like, uh, it's pretty, yeah. I mean, like, how does he do that? Anyways, that's a sharp sword, man. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but you know, at that moment in time, it really begins to speak to you and say, you know, we, we, we oftentimes want to abandon God's promise because of our discomfort. You know, we, we, we yeah, we want to take shortcuts because it's, it's not comfortable. It's painful where we are. Well, I don't know if you know this or not, but pain will produce praise uh, if you stay in it long enough. 
uh, because you know the Bible says that that this weeping is going to endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. So if, if we can if we can last, if we can make it through um, the, the the dark times, there's going to be joy on the other side of it. But we have to get to a point of where we praise in the middle, and that was a lot of what we talked about today. Is that Christians today are so easy to shout before it, they're so easy to shout after it, but nobody shouts in the middle of it, and because nobody, I hate to say this, because nobody shouts in the middle of it, a lot of times our churches stay quiet on Sundays uh -huh. because we've got a lot of people going through a lot of stuff, but nobody knows how to shout through it, and that's a problem. Uh -huh. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and that goes back to what we've talked time and time again about being vulnerable, um, you know, about being open with the problems you're dealing with, about being open with your struggles. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, there ain't a single person that, that, that comes in here on a Sunday or Wednesday that, that doesn't have a struggle going on or multiple struggles all at once. Um, you know, we're all dealing and struggling with something, so I don't know why we think we're, you know, any better, you know, at risk of being made fun of from, <laughs> from anyone else. Right. Uh, because, you know, they're all struggling with something. We're all struggling with something. And uh, we, we need to get more vulnerable about those sorts of things, you know. And I think a lot of times we get maybe even afraid of, you know, oh, they're just throwing a pity party. They're complaining yeah. about everything going on in their life, you know. And, and I think there's a difference between complaining because you can come at somebody and complain all day long. You can say, God, you know, I wish I had this. I wish I had that. I wish this happened. I wish that happened. I wish this didn't happen. I wish I felt better. I wish I was happier. I wish I was, you know, blah, 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 blah. Um, but, you know, there's a difference between doing that and saying, you know, yeah, things are, you know, things are kind of tough right now, but I know God's right. got this. I know, yeah. you know, I, I know that, you know, I know I'll make it through it. I know this is only temporary. Things will be okay. Um, you know, these are things that are going on. If you could pray for me, that'd be great. You know, I could definitely use some extra strength. Uh, but, you know, I know God's got this. I know God's got me. Um, you know, there's a difference between, you know, complaining and, or, you know, complaining and praising. Um, I think they oh, sound, huge yeah, exactly, you know, and you know, we, we like to, we like to think that, you know, everybody's going to be, because we, we're, I think we're very easy. It's very easy for us to fall into that. Oh, woe is me mindset. You know, we've talked about that time and time the again. The victim mentality. Yeah, that, that victim mentality of, you know, everything yeah. happens to me, you know, and, and, and I think we also run into that thing too. And I, I can't remember exactly where I'm pulling this from in the Bible, but, you know, it's just like. Uh, where it's basically like I'm owed nothing. And I believe this was Paul uh, that said this. Uh, but, you know, it's like basically I'm owed nothing. You know, me being in these chains basically was, um, you know, was still a blessing. You yeah, know, I'm still yeah alive. it was Paul that said yeah, that. And yeah. so, you know, it's just, you know, we are owed nothing. You know, we, you know, all these horrible, bad, or what we consider are horrible, bad, terrible things that are happening to us are not happening when we want them to or not happening how we want them to. Yeah. Um, it's very easy for us to get in that mindset because that's where Satan wants us. He wants us trapped in that mindset of, you know, woe is me. Right. You know, I'm downtrodden. I'm defeated. But I'm a victim. But that's not where God has called us to be. Yeah. You know, God gives us uh, trials and temptations. You know, God puts us through uh, battles sometimes, you know, to, to strengthen us. Yeah. You know, and I like to think, you know, back um, all the way back to Exodus. Um, I was talking to the kids last uh, Man, we're Wednesday. Going way back, right? Now. I know we're going way back. Yeah. Um, you talked about this on one Sunday, I believe, just about how you know, like the Israelites, God led them the long way around. Oh yeah. You know, he he didn't lead them the short way. Uh, you know, to where they were going, he led them the long way around. You mm -hmm. know, because sometimes we're not ready for the fight. That you know, we take that shortcut, we're not going to be ready for what oh, comes. Absolutely. Um, you know, there's so many times that we can take shortcuts, and you know, we're not going to be ready for what comes. You know, oh, we need some money. We take a shortcut by getting a loan. We're not ready for what comes as, as right, a result of that, right. uh, you know, and so it's, it's important for us to trust God, trust the process, um, you know, and again, I, I'm one to tell you right now that it's been hard for me, you know, we're in the process of getting this house and mm -hmm. we're about six months behind what we thought we were going to be, right. uh, you know, it's been very hard, it's been very difficult and I don't understand why, um, but I know that, you know, it's coming, it's coming, it's, it's right there, I know it's going to make it, it's going to be okay, you know, it's going to happen. A year it's from not, now. Yeah, man, <laughs> shut up, no, <laughs> but, but yeah, it's going now. to happen. There will be people unalive. There will be many people unalive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, if it takes a year. <laughs> but yeah. uh, again, you know, it's just that that process of, you know, through this whole process, yes, it sucks. Uh, it's hard. It's difficult. It's not, you know, we want things to go the way we want them to. But, you know, at the end of the day, we have to have, again, I can complain all day long, but I have to have that faith to back up, you know, a little bit. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying, you know, like, hey, yeah, I know this isn't happening right now. But it doesn't mean it's not going to happen. Right. Um, and, you know, if I sit there and try to make shortcuts and try to rush things and push things through faster than they need to, you know, it may not turn out as well as it would have been. if I would have just trusted God and trusted the process. Yeah. And that's what like what was really amazing mm -hmm. to me about our service today was that when we done the first altar call, I know y'all are like first altar. What are y'all doing? You know, uh, so like when we first false clothes. yeah, yeah, <laughs> well, we have seven every Sunday. Uh, so the first altar call today, you know, we literally had, I would say probably five, six, maybe seven people down here praying. Uh, 
And then before we went, this lady comes down. Shout out, Patty. Uh, this lady comes down, and she stands here, and she puts all her business out in the street. I mean, all of it. Like, she comes up to me, and she says, Kenan, you told us Wednesday night that we need to confess what we got going on in our lives so we can pray about it. Here's what's going on in my mm -hmm. life. And she just started in. And it went from health. It went from, uh, it went from vehicles. It went to finances. It went to, I mean, just some different stuff. And, and I was just like, man, thank you so much, first off, for being honest. You know, thank you so much for coming forward and saying you've got stuff to deal with. Well, here's the deal. As soon as we said that, I said, listen, I said, you know, if your vehicles broke down this week, we need to be down here praying. If you've been sick, you need to be down here praying. If you've had financial woes, we need to be down here praying. Well, then all of a sudden, the next altar call we have, there's 40 people down here at the altar, you know, and it's like, that is what we talk about time in and time out, week in and week out, that somebody, not the preacher, not the worship team, you know, we don't hold the key to the service. We got the message. We got the worship. You know, the teachers have the message in here for the kids. But truly, who holds the key to the service is the people, you know, the people that are here. And if you will move and trust God in whatever God's trying to do in your life, you're going to open up a doorway for so many other people. It was crazy to me to start watching people just file out of the pews and just coming straight to the altar and going, yeah, I need prayer. Yeah, I'll pray. Yeah, we need prayer. Yeah, we're struck. You know, and it's like, where was you at 20 minutes ago? Uh, you know, but what it took was somebody coming forward, confessing and saying, hey, look, like, you know, I'm suffering right now. But you know what? Just like we prayed today, we're blessed regardless of what. And, and it may sound so cliche. I get it. I understand where you're like, Oh, I'm blessed. I really look blessed. Like, yeah, look at my bank account right now. Tell me I'm blessed. You are blessed because no matter if you have four cents in the bank, you're blessed. Because what? Because why? Because guess what? Because no matter what happens, God can, God can take away everything. God can replace everything and give you even better. Go ask Job. You know, God took everything away from Job. Then he gave everything back and then he gave him even more. You know, it's like things like that where we have to read the Bible and understand that no matter what it is, the sweatshirt I'm wearing for the people who are going to watch us on YouTube, um, the car that you drive, the job that we go to, the house that we live in, all of that stuff, God gave it to us. And here's the deal. God can take it all. If he wants it, God can take every bit of it. God can take my health. God can take my hearing. God can take, my, God can take every, anything that he wants to because it's God's to begin with. And so even if we only have four cents, even if we're still sick, even if we're still going through a divorce, even if we're still addicted, even if we still have problems, God's still good. Mm -hmm. And God's still going to bless. God's still going to work and move. God's still going to do what he does. But we have to get to a point in time where it's like, where we talked about today, you know, we feel like hypocrites when we praise God, but yet we got a whole crap of stuff going on. We're not hypocritical. That's exactly what he wants you to do. He wants you to praise in the middle of it. He wants you to shout him out in the middle of it because now you're voicing the only thing that can help you. Uh -huh. You're voicing the only thing that can help make your life whole and complete again. And once you call out and cry out to him, man, that's when the healing starts. That's when the good stuff starts. And we just got to get to that point where we're not feeling hypocritical or we're not feeling judgmental or we're not feeling like, you know, uh, that, that somebody's going to look at us the wrong way. But instead, it's like, yo, I'm doing this for God. I'm doing this for me, I'm doing this for my family. I'm doing this for the next generation. Like, let's get this right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think we become, and then I, I did that message, I think, on New Year's Eve about being prideful. Um, you know, I think a lot of uh, Christians, a lot of people just in general are more prideful than they want to admit. Um, you know, they like to think that they accomplish things or they earned this or they earned that or they're, you know, this or that or big yeah. G, you know, whatever you want to say. Right. Um, you know, there, a lot of people are very much, are much more prideful than they want to admit. And that's where it comes back to just being so much more vulnerable. Uh, you know, because what I have does not belong to me. Um, you know, at the end of the day, I, I've, I've, I have to challenge myself sometimes not to call it mine. Uh, you know, like not, it's not my health. It's not my car. It's not my yeah. house. It's not, yeah. you know, it, it's God's house. Uh, and so sometimes I just have to replace my with the word the, you know, like, God, you know, thank you for the car. Thank you yeah. for the, you know, this that I have, you know, yeah. and replacing it. That is just, it's again, it's a small change, but it's a mindset shift. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I think that's just important for us to do and remember you know, that God has given us everything that we have, every breath, mm -hmm. every step, mm -hmm. every single thing that we have, God has given us. You know, God breathed life into Adam. God, you know, spoke everything we see into existence. Yeah. Um, you know, and we just have to remember that everything we have comes from him in some way, shape or form. Um, you know, and I think back to I believe it was Nebuchadnezzar in Babylon. 
Uh, you know, like the, the Bible said that, you know, God gave him everything he had. God gave him the position he had. He had all the riches he could ever ask for, all the power he could ever ask for, all the authority. If, if he said something, then people had to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, he had all of this, but because he became prideful, God told him that he was going to be stripped of everything and go into the wilderness like an animal. Mm -hmm. uh, and it happened. <laughs> it, yeah. it, exactly that happened. Because he would not turn away from his prideful ways. He would not give glory to God for what he had. And so, therefore, he was sent out in the wilderness like an animal. Yeah. Um, and, and, we, you know, we have to understand that everything we have can be taken away like that. Not to say, again, you know, that God's some vengeful, wrathful God that's going to take everything away from you at a moment's notice for no reason. Right. You know, sometimes he takes things away from us to correct us, yeah. to discipline us, to show us where we're wrong, to show us where we need to get better. Um, but, you know, again, I think it's just important for us, to, you know, to, to not need that correction. Yeah. Um, you know, to be vulnerable, to not be prideful, and to come up to this altar when you feel that. And, and this is another thing, too, I think. And we, we talked about this time and time again, and I think maybe we need to be a little bit more direct about it. But sometimes it takes one person to coming up to this altar for two more people to come, three yeah. more people to come, four yeah, more yeah, people yeah. to come. And, you know, you may not be that person today who think, oh, I really need prayer today. But maybe you're that person who still needs to come up to this altar so that way other people feel more comfortable coming up to this altar. Yeah. You know, we've talked about that being almost a, a duty and responsibility of a church leader. Right. Uh, you know, to, to come, you know, when, when nobody's coming up to this altar, sometimes it takes you, even though you may not need a ton of prayer today, you yeah. feel pretty good today. Yeah. Maybe you need to come up to this altar because you coming up to the altar is what's going to cause somebody who really needs prayer to come up to the altar. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there's, um, I guess, security in numbers. You know, like we, we see that, you know, the more yeah. people that are coming up, you know, we, we see it with clapping. You know, one person starts to clap, a bunch of other people start to clap. No, one don't. person says, sometimes, sometimes. <laughs> uh, one person it's says amen, soft. other people it's say a, amen. Yeah, it's like that little... It's, like a, it's a golf clap. Yeah, there's the sirens, sure. shout out. There's shout out to yep, the sirens, sirens are coming man. down, I like it. Yeah. Uh, but again, you know, it, it's, you know, not to put too much responsibility on your shoulders, the viewer or listener, but, you know, I think it is important sometimes for, for you to be the first person to come up, even if you don't need it as bad as the people behind you. Yeah. You know, it still will free those other people up to, to come down. You know, you being... Uh, vulnerable will lead other people to feel uh, more welcome to be vulnerable. I think that's that. Uh, I agree. That is, I feel like a part of leadership. That is a part of you know just uh, taking those reins and saying, you know what, like if nobody else is moving, I'll move. Uh, I think for I think like you said, everybody needs prayer, regardless, man. Um, you know, it, it's something that that as I told people today during the sermon. We're going to stand before God. Uh, every person is going to stand before God, and we're going to have to give an account of our lives. And the one thing I wanted to focus on today was is that we're not going to just have to give an account for everything we did, but we're going to have to give an account for everything we didn't do. And what, what I mean by that is is that, you know, what if, what if Nick and I would have never started this podcast even though God said to do it? What if, you know, we didn't start this church and God said to do it? What if, um, you know, God is speaking to you about something and you don't do it? So we're not only going to be held accountable for what we did do, but we're going to be held accountable for the things that we didn't do. And, you know, for, for me, I think a big one is, you know, I, I think God's going to look at us one day and go, how come you didn't praise during the middle of that? How come you didn't trust me? How come, how, you know, and, and you're like, well, God knows me. You know, God knows my heart and God knows all this. And I've said this many times, you know, you, we use that excuse, God knows my heart, and that should scare you. Mm -hmm, that should scare you that God knows your heart. Because there's thoughts that go through my mind. There's processes that go through my heart that I know sometimes are not godly. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, God knows that. And so if I'm not quick to go, hey, God, man, listen, God, hey, get me back on the right path just really quick here. You know what I'm saying? If you're not quick to do that, if you're not quick to say that, if you're not, if you're not quick to praise him and if you're not quick to do that kind of stuff, man, then you're going to allow yourself to get caught up in this victim mentality that we talk a lot about in this woe is me type deal. Uh, one more instance really quick. I know we've already been at this for a little bit, but one more instance in the Bible that we talked about today was the Hebrew kids, you know, the Hebrew boys, the, the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego who were tossed in that fiery furnace by, Nick mentioned them, Nebuchadnezzar, uh, and Nebuchadnezzar turns his fire up seven times hotter. The guards who throw these boys in there are, are snatched up by the fire. They're killed by the fire. And these boys are standing in the middle of the fire. Now, they're not dead. And the fire is not touching them. They're not burning up. They don't even feel hot, you know. And, and they're standing in the middle of this fire. Now, I asked the question today to the church, and, and I think you should probably listen to this question too, but how many of us in 2024 would complain about being in the furnace mm -hmm. instead of praising that the flames aren't burning us up? You know, and it's like, that's the mentality shift that Nick was talking about. That's the mentality shift that I'm talking about. That's 
that's a moment in time where we have to, again, as I talked about today, be grateful, be thankful that times and situations could always be worse. Absolutely. And, and, and I, I am, listen, I am a work in progress. My wife will tell you that, the people I work with, the people I church with, I, I'm a work in progress, man. And so when I say that this message today was for me, it was for me. Uh -huh. um, I preach this message to me today uh, because there are times and moments where I get so frustrated, I get so angry, I get so bent out of shape, I get tired uh, because, because I'm like in the middle of a situation and I'm like, God, you are the God of anything and everything. If you wanted to, at any moment in time, you could reach down and you could take this whole situation and you could just poof, take care of it. Mm -hmm. Why haven't you done it, right? Mm -hmm. Why do bad things happen to good people? We asked that question today. That's a, lot, that's, that's a question a lot of people ask. And I'm like, man, God, why? Like, why would you not just do it? You see me struggling. You see me angry. You see me frustrated. You see me perplexed. You see me doing all of this stuff. And God's like, you know what? But I don't see you crazy. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, mm. <laughs> And that's why I got to preach messages like that for, because, you know, a lot of people will sit out there in, in, in the pews and be like, oh, well, he's just, he's fussing at me and he's fussing. No, I'm fussing at me. Uh -huh. I'm fussing at me. Like, I'm letting it be known on people suck love it anyways, uh, or love them anyways, uh, you know, that guess what? Hey, like, you know, messages that I preach, every message I preach every Sunday is a message that I need to hear. Uh, and so whether it's good, bad, ugly, indifferent, in the middle, upside down, whatever, it's like, it's something that I need to hear myself. And today's message, in, in specifically was like just just straight up like down my road going hey man like even if you don't have it all together praise anyways even if it doesn't make sense praise anyways even if it hurts praise anyways even if it's your last breath praise anyways you know like stop stop trying to figure things out stop trying to make them work and just praise and see what happens and you know man that's that's what i'm gonna do uh and 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 uh, hopefully I can tell you within six months that it's the best time of my life. Uh, and if it isn't, then we're not going to do this anymore. <laughs> I am. I'm throwing in the towel, man. I'm done. No, uh, but you know, I mean, that's just, that's something that I needed myself to hear today was just praise no matter what. You yeah, know? absolutely. And I, I think that's something. And I remember a, a long, long time ago, I had a, a German lady at a church. I went to a back, long time in, my ago, day. Right? back in my day, uh, <laughs> but you know, I had a German lady. I was, uh, I, First time I'd ever been let go from a job, they actually shut the store down I was working at. Uh, and so, like, I was kind of having a hard time finding another job. I was in college at the time, so, you know, I didn't have a very good schedule. Uh, so it was pretty difficult and hard to get a job at this time. This was pre-COVID. Student loans. <laughs> pre-COVID. Pre yeah. I don't have too many of those, thank God. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, again, it was just, it was, you know, pre-COVID. It was, you know, job market wasn't as, you know, crazy as it is now. But um, anyway, you know, I, I remember I was complaining. I can't find a job. I can't find a job. Can't find a job. I've been praying about it. I've been. I think sometimes our complaining can turn into prayer instead of praise. And, and, and I'm going to go somewhere with this in a second. So you know, like I, I'm sitting there complaining about stuff. I'm praying about stuff. And, and in, in the same mind, my prayers were complaints. Um, God, you know, it's basically like, why God have, have you not given me this job yet? Like, what are you doing? Yeah. What's going on? I need this job. You know, I need this job. Yeah. Why haven't you given me a job yet? What's going on? Right. Um, so, you know, and that's where I'm going at with that. You know, our, our, our prayers can sometimes be complaints and yeah. we need to, instead of praying, we need to praise. And that's mm -hmm. what this woman told me. Um, you know, she said, instead of praying to God for a job, thank God for the job he's going to give you. And yeah. I think I've mentioned this story on this podcast before, but yeah. you know, maybe somebody else needs to hear it. Episode uh, 17. 17. Oh yeah, I'm sure. Uh, but again, you know, I think it's still important, you know, for, for people here is that, you know, sometimes you have to, and it's kind of goes back to that mindset shift I was talking about earlier, you know, turn that prayer into praise, you know, thank mm -hmm. God for what you have faith will happen, um, ahead of time, you know, while you're in the mess, while you're, you're confused, you're scared, you're in chaos, you know, it, it, we talked about, you know, you had the illustration out here, you know, you had, you know, someone over here, someone over here and someone in the middle down on the stairs, these other people are standing up like mountaintop to mountaintop instead yeah. of the valley. Yeah. Um, you know, when we're in that valley, we need to have faith that we're going to get to this mountaintop. Absolutely. And we need to praise God for when we're going to get to this mountaintop. Yeah. You know, I don't know when it's going to happen. I don't know how it's going to happen. I don't know what it's going to look like. I don't know how long it's going to take to get there, but I'm thankful because God, you're going to get me there. Yeah. Uh, you know, and that's where we need to get into those, those moments when we're down low, deep and scared and hurt and depressed and angry and confused. We have to remember, you know, sometimes, you know, I think our first uh, reaction is to pray. Yeah. Please, God, get me out of this. Please, God, get me out of this. Please, God, get me out of this. 
Um, but instead, you know, turn those prayers into praise. Say, thank you, God, for getting me out of this. I know you're going to take care of me. Mm. I know this isn't going to last forever. Mm. I talked one night to the youth about uh, grief and joy, and I always say that grief is temporary. Yeah. You know, those, those moments that you're in are temporary. They will at some point give way to joy, yeah. to give way to, you know, to, to great and wonderful things. Mm -hmm. and, and I think you mentioned this today too, you know, the greater the battle, the greater the blessing. Absolutely. Uh, you know, you, you know, sometimes we go through things longer and harder than they should have been, yeah. uh, or we feel like they should have been <laughs> because God's got something even better for us. It feels like years. Right. I know it really man. does. It really does. Uh, and so again, those are just kind of some final things I wanted to leave people with. I think those are some good things to, to grasp and hold on to. Yeah. One thing I want to close with tonight is, is again, you heard us talk about doing the hike this afternoon. Uh, and man, I tell you what, the elevation change was crazy. Uh, people struggled to get to the top. And, but the cool part was, was that, you know, there, you were out of breath, you were overworked, you were like, man, sh like, I, you know. But once we got to the top and then we walked over to the ledge and looked out, it was probably one of the most beautiful pictures that you could ever see. It was quiet. It was peaceful. Um, you know, and it was just like, man, and you look at you, you look at where you came from, you know, you look at where you started, where you came from. And then as we walked back down and got back to the starting point and looked up and it's like, I climbed that today. I've done that today. I, I, I was standing at the top of that. Like, how cool is that? And it just makes you, it makes you, it makes you appreciative uh -huh. of number one, not giving up. It makes you appreciative, number two, that, you know what, that mountains are just ways that God can show you grace, love, and mercy. And if you're willing to climb the mountain, he's willing to give you the strength, the energy, the passion, the desire, the commitment to do it. You just have to be willing to take that step. And then after you take one, you got to be willing to take another and take another and take another and take another. And yeah, you're going to slip, you're going to trip, you're going to fall, you may roll back down a little bit, uh, you may skin your knee, you may be out of breath, you may have to take a break, but you know what? You're going to make it. You're going to get to the top part of that mountain. And once you do, you're going to look back and you're going to be like, man, I tell you what, all that hard work I put in was worth it. Uh -huh. It was worth it in the end. And so for us tonight, I, I want us to get this, or whenever you might listen to this, I want us to get this tonight, today, tomorrow, next week, next month, whatever you listen to this, that... Being blessed is oftentimes suffering. Being blessed is, is not the position you're in, but it's the mind placement and the heart placement that you have. And once you become blessed and you start speaking that and you start believing that and you start living that, it doesn't matter the situation around you at that point. It, does, it doesn't matter how big the battle is because you know that God is for you, God is with you, and that God's on, on the other side of that battle waiting for you as well. And that once you come out of it, man, the blessing, like we said today, is going to be just as big as the battle you faced, if not just a little bit bigger, because that's who God is. So we want you to take that away tonight, that being blessed is not always about having things, but it's about being able to praise no matter what you do or don't have. And that's a big, big mind shift. Mind, mind, what I want to say here. I don't know, but you mind, say something. That, yeah, yeah. <laughs> my, my <shift. laughs> mindset shift was what I wanted to say is a huge mindset shift. So we hope that it helps you. We hope that you're blessed by it. We hope that uh, you can go back and maybe read some of the stories we talked about. You know, David being anointed, the Hebrew kids. Maybe maybe you could go back and read some stuff in the Bible and be like, you know what, there was some pretty messed up people in there too, but God used them and God blessed them and God took care of them. So again, as we always say, man, tell a friend, tell a family member, tell somebody about people suck love them anyways. Hit that download button. Like Nick said, leave a review, send a share out, do whatever, man. Um, you're helping. One way or another, you're helping. And if one ear hears the gospel and changes their life, it's all been worth it, man. It's all been worth it. But we continue to do this every week in hopes that it won't just be one person, but it'll be 10 to 100 to 1,000 to a million. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, we're just going to keep going. So we love you. We thank you. Again, thank you for tuning in. And until we see you again, be blessed.